We're here with a legend, everybody, Mr. R.L. Stein. If you don't know him, where have you been for like the last five decades? Uh, I think most of our audience. Hey, you don't have all to say up. five decades. Come on. Well, I'm almost you at could five say decades. Three decades. You all right. Could... Let's say three decades to, <laughs> Thank to, to you. be nice for it. We'll edit that in. You know, I, I grew up with these books. Most of the audience here that listens to us uh, all grew up on your books here. Um, we always were called it uh, the gateway drug of goosebumps uh going yes. into uh young yeah, adulthood one, when you'd start branching into some of the more serious stuff like a Kuntz or Stephen one magazine King. called me a training bra <laughs> really yeah, called me a training bra for stephen king all right and it's yeah, a different I way actually, to put it I, I the day i met stephen king i've only met him once right and it was at the edgar awards the mystery writers award right and we had a nice talk and then i said steve did you know that a magazine once called me a training bra for you. And he said, yes, I know. Is he the one that told him? <laughs> he knew it. No, he knew about it. Yeah, we grew up uh, uh, on your books, and uh, it, it's never stopped. Like, you, you hit a vein with not just, like, pop culture, American culture, but, like, with the world. And people just didn't want you to stop. It's going to this well, they day. They won't let me stop. They won't I let know. you stop. It's enough already, isn't it? Are you ready it's to enough. retire and just ride no. off into the writers sunset? Writers don't retire. Yeah. I mean, how many writers don't? You, know, you just drop dead on your keyboard. Yeah. You don't retire. No, hey, listen, 32 years of goosebumps. And you know when we started out, I said, let's do two or three. Yeah. yeah How'd that shows, work out? Shows what I know, yeah. Some people may not know this, but you started in, uh, doing a lot of uh, humor writing. No, that's all. I only wanted to be funny. I yeah. never planned to be scary. I did a humor magazine for kids called Bananas, Bananas yeah. for 10 years. And that was like my life's dream. And when Bananas folded, I thought I was just going to coast the rest of my life. I figured that was it for me. How do you make the transition from, from Bananas and joke books and stuff like that into... Goosebumps. Because I think horror is funny. There's like something missing in my brain where I don't get scared by horror. If I go to a scary movie or I'm reading a, a novel, it makes me laugh. People come up to me and they say, oh, I had to leave on all the lights after I read your book. Right. I had to lock the doors. I couldn't. I've never had that feeling. It I makes don't sense. know what that feeling is. That people I just react think, to things differently. I just think, if, you know... If you're in the movie theater and the shark comes up and chews up the teenager, I'm the one in the theater laughing. Humor and horror, it's the same visceral reaction. I would say, when you sneak up behind somebody and you go, boo, what's the first thing they do? They gasp. Yeah. And then they laugh. It's, it's the same reaction. Sometimes they punch you, if, you know. Well, yeah, that's later. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think it's very, humor and horror are very closely, re re when you go up to a roller coaster, you're in an amusement park, and you hear people laughing and screaming at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're on one of those, especially those old wooden roller coasters, yes. if a park still has them, yeah. and you're hearing the and you're thinking, right. this thing is so dilapidated, it's going to fall apart before I even get over to the part where I think I'm going to fall over. I'm going to die before I die. <laughs> and then neither happens. You're terrified, yeah, and then you yeah. get off, and you're right. You're right. That adrenaline rush, some, that uh, dopamine in your brain, I guess, and you're just like, oh, my God, I died. I almost died. And then you start laughing and, and having a good time because yeah. you almost died. That's right. Yeah. That's what it is. And you figured out a way to... to bottle it essentially putting it all into your stories into your books and you you had just said you were only looking to do like two or three or maybe that was the original agreement agreement to do about two or three no i didn't want i you know i was i didn't want to do goosebumps this mm -hmm. is the truth this this is the kind of businessman i am we were doing fear street books for teenagers right. killing off teenagers every month and the series was doing really well and my editor said Nobody has ever done a scary series for 7 to 12 year olds before. We should try it. And I said, no, I don't want to. It'll mess up my Fear Street audience. Right. I didn't want to do it. And they kept after me and kept after me. And finally I said, all right, if I can think of a good name, we'll, we'll, let's try two or three. And now it's 32 years later. I know. It's and like here's, where, here's where Goosebumps came from. This is true. Um, I'm reading TV Guide, and in those days, <laughs> TV Guide had the listings in the middle of the magazine. Right. It showed everything that was on, and at the bottom of a page was a tiny ad. It said, it's Goosebumps Week on Channel 11. 
Was that here in New York? And yeah, yeah. And I just stared at it. I said, "That's perfect. We'll call it Channel 11." That's my bad joke. Oh, I get I, it. Yeah, I, I was trying to think. No, I'm sorry. That's no, no, a bad I, joke. I grew. But that's where it came from. I grew that's up where, in here in New York, in the New York area, watching th- that stuff on Channel 11. But they had somebody. Every market had their own local oh, yeah. guy. Yeah, um, right. And then when it wasn't the horror stuff, it was the weird, wacky stuff like Uncle Floyd or, or something like that. Yes, Captain right. Kangaroo, those kind of things. <laughs> but that's Uncle that's, Floyd. That, God, I haven't thought about Uncle Floyd. I don't think anyone's thought about Uncle Floyd time. in a long no. time. <laughs> so that's where the name came from, just a little yeah, blurb. Yeah, just from a little on. ad. There was the word goosebumps. I said, it's perfect because it's scary, but it's also, it's light. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah. It's amazing where inspiration comes from. You just find it's the you weirdest. Know, accidentally. When you're looking for it, it doesn't happen. And then when you're not looking for One it, one day boom, I was in, in Walmart, face. and there was a sign up. Of, they had Halloween costumes, and it said "mostly ghostly," in Walmart on the wall in Walmart. It said it's a perfect book series title, and I did a series for Random House called "Mostly Ghostly." And the title Walmart's came from a Walmart wall. Yeah. <laughs> You were talking about your your uh, your Fear Street books. Um, a few years back on Netflix, they put out three movies based off the uh, the Fear Street book series. They did pretty well. Has there been any? Pretty cons- well. All three were number one on Netflix. Okay. They were all number one. They were all number they, one. Yeah. No, I was shocked by those films because they're R rated. I've never done anything R-rated. Even my life isn't R-rated. Right. I've never done anything R-rated. I was shocked by them. But, you know, they're slasher movies. Yeah. And uh, then they were all number one, and I got to like them. And now we're doing more. Well, that was my question. Was there any, because of that, was there any yeah, kind of uh, interest in, in the resurgence one al- of that? already yeah. shot. One already filmed. What's it called? Uh, based on The Prom Queen. Okay. That Fear Street novel. And uh, it, I think maybe Valentine's Day on Netflix. Uh, they haven't really announced when. Sometime next year they're going to show it. That's fantastic. And it, no one's listening, right? No. I'll tell you, there was, we have three more, in, another trilogy in the works. We have three more. All with we Netflix? have people writing them, but I'm not allowed to talk about it okay, yet. Okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, for Netflix. I know nothing. Nobody yeah. listens to our no, show, no so it's secret safe with no us. No one will know. But that's yeah, fantastic. we have three more in the works. Isn't it insane that it, there's still so much interest? And it's not just the fan base that started with you. They're still here, but then their children came into it, and new generations yes. keep finding your stuff, and it just keeps yeah, perpetual it's, motion. It's amazing. But I'm, you know, the older audience, I'm nostalgia to them, yeah. right? I'm nostalgia. <laughs> that took a while to get used to. Not necessarily. That was hard to I get used to. I know people who save their books and still have their books and pass them along. Yeah. No, the, the reason the like the, the reason the Goosebumps movie did so well, the, when Jack Black playing me that movie, right, uh, is that parents came for nostalgia and they brought their kids, and so we had two different audience streams for the movies. It's really what a lucky thing. Yeah, you got more coming. So again, this is never yeah. ending for you. This is well. Um, <laughs> here's another question for you. Back in the your days of, of humor writing and and. and course kid stuff what was it like being part of eureka's castle no that was that was that's my whole tv career yeah being head writer of that show we had a lot of fun Uh, all the puppets all the puppeteers had been trained by jim henson and they were really good and i it was a very interesting experience for me because i would write a script and everyone would sit around a table and tear my script apart and then I'd go home and write a new version of the script, and then we'd go in front of the cameras, and the puppets would come up, and they'd say whatever they wanted. <laughs> they did whatever they wanted. Yeah. And luckily, they were really good, and I could take credit for it. Well, one, they should if they were part of, uh, what was Henson's company? Was it Children's Television Workshop? Or? No, it was, ne- it was Nickelodeon. Oh, it was regular. No, no, I mean the, the Henson people they were training with. Was oh. it the Children's Television Workshop, or know. was it the Henson's like, Creature uh, Shop kind of thing? I think Henson Creature, creature Shop. Creature Shop? Okay. Yeah. They so, were all really talented. See, you, you, you did one better, and that shows that you're, you know a great writer you went right. back and redid the script and brought it in I would have just printed out the script again and handed it in and said here you go I made changes and since they didn't really check out the first copy yeah. they wouldn't have known the second no, time around I couldn't get away with that I couldn't get away well nowadays that was fun that was you know we did we shot a hundred episodes I was the first editor of Nickelodeon magazine really yeah 
I did. I was a magazine person. Did you ever get slimed? Never did. No? I got a pie in the face. All right. But I never got slimed. No? Never no. showed up at the Nickelodeon's no. uh, Kids Awards you, to get slimed? No. I showed up at the... I, I, um, one year, I was uh, author of the year on the Kids' Choice Awards. And um, I was really... It was a thrill because 50 million kids had voted. Yeah. And I was, you know, chosen. And what I was called the prize my they nephew. Give you? Was it the blimp or was it the a surfboard? Blimp. Okay, orange blimp. blimp. Okay. And I called my nephew Sam. He was nine. He was a Nickelodeon freak. He loved Nickelodeon. And I said, Sam, how would you like to go to L.A. with me and go to the Nickelodeon Awards? And he said, Oh no! If I knew you were going, I would have voted for you. <laughs> Well, that's family, isn't it? He voted for Shel Silverstein. Family's always the ones that are the least <laughs> impressed by your success yes. and everything. Like, yeah, nothing. It's like my brother's yeah. a my brother's a jerk. I don't care how many people like him, and he's Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you know, the biggest <laughs> star on the planet. And there's always somebody that's going to think I knew him when he's yeah. not what you think he is. <laughs> so let's fix this here. You still have time, Nickelodeon people out there. Let's get a lifetime achievement award for Mr. Stein here. Well, get him back on the Nickelodeon's oh. Kids Choice Awards. This man needs to be slimed. <laughs> that's the last thing need he needs I, in his no, career. He needs really to be need slimed. It. Yes, I'll you do. No, I'll tell you what ha <laughs> What really happened. I won three years in a row. I won three orange blimps. Right. And the rule was, if you won four blimps, you'd get a platinum blimp. So I won three in a, in a row, and the next year, Harry Potter came out. Oh, man. That was it for me. You're not going to top that. No, that Especially was at, it. Especially at the, 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 the no, very I was, I was crest done. of when it's about to, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is time we, uh, we're running out of time here with you. You've got a busy day here at Nira Comic Con. I got to say, thank you so much for taking your time to, to speak with me. Uh, it is a real honor. Somebody who grew up on, with, on your books, and it's just an honor to meet you here. So. Oh, Eric, thank you very much. I really enjoyed talking with you. Stay scary. I will. I will.